What's up ladies and gentlemen, this is T.E. Lawrence, and today, we're gonna discuss why Lucifer deserves to be Queen of Hell, as well as warranted a lot more credit and appreciation than she's given. Oh please, if Lucy is the goddamn Queen of Hell, why the hell does no one ever listen to her? <laughs> Shut up, Squidward. Thank you, my queen. Well, hold your horses, dear viewers. Indeed, on the surface, Lucy doesn't seem to assert as much control over Hell as she'd like, and is often depicted more as an incompetent buffoon than the Queen of Hell. But just like with Zadrata the Bitch Demon, we should not judge a book by its cover, because there's always more than it meets the eye. Like many unsung heroes, whose deeds are often overlooked and never recognized, Lucy is a lot more capable than she's portrayed, which is why she's not a CEO and queen in name only. Before we begin, enjoy the speed paint of Lucifer as a tennis athlete in the 2024 Paris Olympics. The finished piece will be shown at the end. Anyways, Lucifer. No, not this Lucifer. No, not that one either. No, the other one. Oh, for God's sake. Thank you. Anyways, our one and only Lucifer, the CEO and Queen of Hell. Having once been the Almighty's most cherished angel, she now finds herself ruling the underworld after an unsuccessful rebellion against her creator and subsequent departure from heaven. Although a shadow of her former self, Lucy has managed to build and maintain her dominion over the rump state. And even if she no longer has the Almighty's blessings, Lucifer is still an angel of God and will run her fiefdom as such. That said, many fan arts and even the game itself show her as an incompetent and wannabe ruler. For one, even the lesser demons appear to be more independent for her comfort. This is telling by judgments and subordination during the final stage. Instead of swiftly putting her foot down like the ruthless CEO she thinks herself to be, she breaks down like an easily triggered and emotionally underdeveloped brat. Though in fairness, this is judgment we're talking about. And she's a strong independent woman who don't need no boss. And of course, Lucy's own arrogance led to her downfall in the exam taker timeline severely underestimating Loremaster's capabilities and severely overestimating her loyalty, a recipe that's guaranteed to bite you back in the ass. Given these facts, you may be wondering, how in hell did she manage to become and stay as ruler of hell for so long? Well, that's because you're not seeing the whole picture. Just like the internet as a whole, there is a negativity bias with her, where the fandom typically fixates on her flaws only. Just like with Zadrata, we are going to explore her overlooked merits that show why she sits at Hell's throne. Let's begin. Going way further back, when Hell was previously ruled by the Old Lords, it was a chaotic mess. In fact, it was pure and unbridled anarchy. Just like the Warring States period of feudal Japan, where the land of the Rising Sun fractured into multiple warlords, thus descending the entire island onto civil strife for almost a hundred years. And it was no different in Hell, with the demons engaged in an eternal battle royale. The only semblance of stability came in the form of a quasi-oligarchy where the Lords of Hell formed an informal council to preserve their own powers, almost akin to a mafia state. Nevertheless, Hell was a primordial cauldron, where only the strong survived. For Lucifer, enough was enough. She and her fellow conspirators were sick of the Lords squandering their powers on their own self-indulgences. It was time to finally put an end to this decayed state of affairs and clean house. It was time to dismantle the old order and build a new one. Just as Tokugawa Ieyasu defeated the rest of his rival warlords and consolidated his rule as the Shogun, Lucifer and her conspirators overthrew the old lords and exiled them to the mortal world before placing herself as the sole ruler of hell. Just as Tokugawa Ieyasu enacted his new social order upon Japan and ushered a new age of peace, Lucifer completely overhauled her new dominion and implemented some sense of civility, seeing that Hell would never fall back to such turbulent strife under the former lords. Although some like Beelzebub dissented against Lucifer's centralization and authoritarian rule, it is undeniable that Hell became a more stable and efficient domain than before, as well as an overall better place for the average demon. Sure, there's still destruction and torture, but it's well-organized and regulated destruction and torture. Plus, you get weekends off and paid holidays. But these feats would not be possible if Lucifer was as incapable as many believe her to be. Because one does not rise to such great heights of power by being incompetent. Utilizing her cunning strategy and ambition, Lucifer and her conspirators were triumphant against the old lords of hell, 
despite the risk of severe retribution for their transgressions. Ultimately, the results speak for themselves. Furthermore, it is one thing to overthrow your master and usurp the throne, but it's a whole nother game to keep your throne and prevent others from doing the same towards you. And Lucifer has so far managed to remain on the throne, not only by ruthlessly quashing any dissent, but also disincentivizing her subjects by making her stable new order a preferable alternative to the dysfunctional old order. In other words, Lucifer transformed Hell from a chaotic cauldron to a well-oiled machine, showing that she's not just a great martial leader, but also a competent administrator and statesman. But Lawrence, Lucifer was still defeated by Loremaster in the Exam Taker timeline. What do you say about that? Indeed, that is true. There were many reasons why Loremaster managed to usurp Lucifer and the latter did contribute to her own downfall. But rather than incompetence, it was Lucifer's arrogance that made her severely underestimate Loremaster, which is the same reason why she lost her rebellion in heaven as well. Yes, Lucy may have her flaws, but being dumb and incompetent are not among them. And remember, fallen or not, she is still the first angel of God. Her flaws still pale in comparison to ones of mere mortals like us. All that said, although Lucifer is a ruthless CEO and quasi-monarch of the Inferno, with an extreme sense of grandeur, mind you, that's only one side of her. Although she doesn't like to show it, beneath all that hardened exterior is something quite mellow. Lucy may be ruthless and cold, but in private, she can be quite the softy with a maternal side. Let's be honest, Lucy is basically the mom of the entire household, as well as the one best resembling the Helltaker's wife. And how could she be not? when she's always wearing an apron and helps take her with cooking and laundry. Furthermore, even more telling is how she treats the other demon gals like her children, especially the younger and more quote-unquote immature gals like Cerberus. I mean, just look at this pic right here. How can you not think that this is just a regular family, when mom, dad, and the kids go for some shopping to prepare for this year's Thanksgiving holiday? How sweet and wholesome. It really does show that despite being fallen, the caring and protective instincts from her former self still remain, and that Lucy is still a sweetie in her own ways. It's clear that Lucifer really takes her role and responsibility seriously. However, the Queen of Hell is a position that burdens tremendous weight upon the bear's shoulders, significantly outweighing the little rewards that come with it. Because despite all of Lucifer's efforts, she is not reciprocated in kind by her minions. The tortured souls of Hell certainly hold no love for their tormentor, that much is self-evident. But even her demons hold little to no respect for Lucifer's authority and follow her more out of free will than she'd like to admit. At most, they tolerate her rule since the status quo is preferable to the previous order of the Old Lords. Even so, the Darwinistic elements still remain, as demons are naturally ambitious. Therefore, there's always an endless horde of challengers who seek to usurp the Queen and take the throne for themselves. It really is a tough balancing act between providing for your subjects while also whipping them into submission. And the constant fear of being overthrown from her hardened position has certainly burdened her psyche. All of this makes me wonder, does Lucifer actually want to remain the Queen of Hell? Perhaps she did initially. Hell needed reform and Lucifer was the right person to spearhead the changes. But after becoming the new master of Hell, she finds herself in a position not too different from the old lords, and with seemingly no one appreciating her for all her efforts, sometimes, Lucy can't help but wonder if she could just step away. To walk away from it all and search for some place, or even someone, who does appreciate her. Someone who isn't constantly out to get her, but rather gives her the comfort and joy she used to receive before her fall. If only there was someone like that. And there is! Who could have known that some beefed up chat with pancakes could woo and domesticate the Queen of Hell? Why on earth would Lucy take a hiatus from her duties and settle as a housewife for some mortal? Well that mortal isn't just any mortal. He's an extraordinary mortal who could not only withstand the fires of Hell but also did the even more unthinkable, which is to show Lucy that there can be a life other than ruthlessly reigning over Hell. One that's more simple yet wholesome and provides the sense of appreciation and love that she always yearned for deep down. Unlike her minions who'd grovel beneath their queen, the Helltaker just saw and treated her as another woman. This was a refreshing treatment for Lucy, who for once could drop her mask and just be herself. And although she's too prideful to admit it, she's come to enjoy the quasi-marriage with her extraordinary mortal by partaking in those simple yet fulfilling activities. 
whether it's going on walks in the autumn, stargazing in the winter, having romantic photo shoots, or shopping with the family at the farmer's market, the Helltaker has shown the Queen of Hell that maybe there can be another life other than ruling Hell, and that the one on Earth ain't so bad at all. Perhaps a sliver of Lucifer the Lightbringer still lives on. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, Lucifer not only deserves her titles as CEO and Queen of Hell, but also deserves more appreciation and credit than she's given. Yes, Lucifer certainly isn't perfect, but it is thanks to her leadership and vision that Hell retains a semblance of stability and civility, which thusly allowed the Helltaker to traverse its inferno and court the Queen of Hell. Yes, Lucifer can be ruthless and cruel, as befitting of her role as CEO of Hell, but just like the Zadrada, she also retains a hidden sweet and caring side, which never completely diminished from her heavenly days. Yes, she can be quite difficult and dangerous to put up with, but just like Modius the lustful demon, the wonderful and wholesome positives certainly outweigh them, which is why Lucy is a keeper. Yes, Lucifer is the devil, but even the devil was once an angel. And of course, here's the finished drawing of Lucifer the Tennis Demon. Tennis is considered a sport for the upper class, so it's a no-brainer that Lucy would go for that. I can totally see her besting her opponents while flaunting off in front of the odd spectators. As one user on the subreddit commented, she is Miss Showboater herself. She'd give a theater performance for every win and she's for the camera every chance she got. That and she does look particularly cute in this outfit. If there's one area Lucy beats all the other demon gals in, it's definitely her sense of style, like the elegant lady she is. Anyways, thanks for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is T.E. Lawrence signing out. Have a good one.